Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. And today I wanna to talk to you about some vanilla fragrances that I have in my collection. I wanna describe them to you, tell you what I think about them, what I like and don't like about them. And maybe it'll help you get some information about if you wanted to make a purchase yourself, you might know a little more about it than just reading the notes online. So vanilla fragrances, vanilla fragrances. I'm gonna go through them with you first, the ones that I wanna compare. But first I wanna tell you why I chose these fragrances. I love vanilla. It is one of my favorite notes. Um, it doesn't have to be with a lot of things. So I chose these fragrances because I, I know a lot of my other fragrances probably have vanilla in them, but these are ones that I think of as vanilla fragrances. They might have one or two other things that you smell as well, but I think of them as uh, at least 50% of vanilla fragrance. So the first one is one with a presentation I get to pull out and show off. It's called Sultan by Royal Crown. And this is the presentation. It is the heaviest, biggest box that I've gotten. Uh, I think this Royal Crown stuff is pretty heavy on the packaging and it's fine as long as it's a great fragrance, you know? So, Sultan by Royal Crown. And um, this is 2018. I see on Fragrantica, this is pictured as a green bottle, but I have this here in person and it is, uh, it's not green to me. There's an X-Straight as well. This is not the X-Straight as far as I know. Wow, they even do an indentation on the bottom. And I think this is made out of clay. Yeah, this is made out of clay, this bottle, not glass. And they in, in, do an impression for like probably an R and a C. It's probably an R and a C in there. All right, so the next fragrance I should clean this bottle because it's dusty. It's Ani by Nishane. This is what I have. This is from 2019. Next, I have Hypnotic Poison. This is from 1998. Hypnotic Poison. And then the next one I have is by Initio, and this is called Absolute Aphrodisiac, uh, something about Privé or something. And this is from 2015. This is a tester, so they wrote the notes on the back, which is very convenient. I think people appreciate it when the notes are on the back of the bottle if possible. So when I market my fragrances and sell them, I'm gonna do my best to make space for that. And then the next one is called Sultan Or, O-R, by Pascal Morabito. And there is not a listing for how, um, what year, there's not a listing for what year this was launched. And Perfumo doesn't even have this one listed, I believe. I couldn't find it this morning. And the next one, is Pink Sugar by Aqualina. This is from 2004, all the way back in 2004. And I told you I like to show the presentation even if it's not super fancy. So this is the presentation of Aqualina. Nice, I like that. Oh, and this pink stuff is like a velvet type of thing. It's like a velvet ribbon that's wrapped around it and stuck to it. It's nice and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Pink sugar. I got this to compare to something else. I wouldn't have normally gotten it, but I got it to compare to something else for a video and it's actually working out for me. You can see. And then the next two are fragrance oils by Kumba Maid. The first one is Vanilla Musk. Um, I'm looking for, oh yeah, okay, so this is 
3.7 milliliters. That's how big this is, just 3.7 milliliters. And then the next one, and, and that doesn't have a year listed either of release. And then the next one is Vanilla Bean by Kumba Maid. And this is the same size. I'm excited to do this. I, I haven't gone through this all. I haven't even smelled the test strips. Now, granted, these are from my collection, so I've worn them all quite a bit, actually. <laughs> quite a bit, especially like that one there. Like this one, I only got it like a month and a half ago because I'm an over sprayer. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you about these, but I don't know what's going to come out of it. I don't know. When I go through these notes with you and I go through the fragrances in this way that we do it on these videos, I sometimes smell different things and I sometimes come to slightly different conclusions about the fragrance. I think that before I sell, any of my fragrances, I need to do a video on them because I might change my mind while I'm doing the video. Yeah, yeah. Doing these videos just helps me to put the fragrance in a different part of my brain, kind of a more left brain aspect, but it also helps me to analyze it and, and get a feel for like, what is it that I don't like about that fragrance? And if there is something I don't like about it and I can identify what that is, having a word for that note, for instance, it gives me a chance to, uh, you know, get uh, more comfortable with with the note, you know, because there's a reason. There's a reason that I'm, I'm being put off by a certain note, I think. The first fragrance, Royal Crown Sultan. The main accords are sweet and then vanilla, woody, amber, fruity, powdery, warm, spicy, balsamic and oud. And the perfumer is not mentioned, but I said this is 2018 release. The notes are Madagascar vanilla in the top, dates, cedar, and fruity notes. And then in the middle is labdanum, Moroccan rose, and jasmine. And then the base notes are myrrh, sandalwood, augerwood or oud, and saffron. I'm back. I was getting hot, so hope you don't mind. I'm wearing a tank top. So let's see what I think of this. Well, it's definitely vanilla, but there's something else. And it could be the augerwood could be the oud that I smell, but yeah, the reason I think it might be the oud is because it smells kind of spoiled, something spoiled. Like if you have a vanilla dessert and it's been in the refrigerator for too long, or it might have like whipped cream or something and it's starting to go off and there's something like that, kind of balsamic. So I can see that people would love that and they would find that addictive. And you know, it could be the saffron too. I don't smell any florals, even though there's Moroccan rose and jasmine. I just don't. So I think that those are like supporting actors that are elevating the fragrance, that uh, elevating the other notes. And um, they mention dates and fruity notes and trying to figure out if I get fruity notes. So I could see dates. Yeah, I could see the dates being a part of that oud situation that I just mentioned. And then cedar. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's it's like the type of cedar that smells like, um, you know, pencil shavings type of cedar. It that's usually that's usually Virginian cedar that smells like pencil shavings. But I've heard that maybe Atlas cedar could also Atlas or Texan cedar could also smell like wood chips or, um, you know, sawdust. Yeah, sawdust is kind of a better way of putting it. So I can smell that. So I smell the vanilla, which they say is Madagascar vanilla. I smell the dates. I smell the oud and the cedar. 
I don't smell the florals and I don't, I don't smell labdanum. There's sandalwood. Uh, yeah, I could see that there is sandalwood. The myrrh, I'm glad they put it in there because it's one of my favorite notes, but I don't really smell it. I think it just lends a richness to it, but it doesn't stand out. And usually myrrh doesn't stand out. You know, maybe somebody should make a fragrance that's like, uh, I don't know, kind of centered around myrrh. Like, I think they call that when it's a single note perfume, something flora, but it doesn't have to be a floral. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's probably a French word, so it'll come to me. So the next fragrance is Ani by Nishan A. This was released in 2019 and the perfumer is listed as Cecile Zerokian. The main accords for Ani are warm, spicy, and then vanilla, woody, citrus, powdery, amber, aromatic, soft, spicy, balsamic, and then fruity. And the notes are ginger, bergamot, pink pepper, and green notes. Middle notes, cardamom, black currant, and Turkish rose. And the base notes are vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, cedar, patchouli, musk, and ambergris. So when I smell this fragrance, I don't know what's going on in there, but I'm like into it. This is just, I mean, for one, it brings back memories. And if a fragrance brings back memories, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good fragrance. But for me, it's it's a strong memory of the day I came back from a vacation trip and it was in the mail that I had, you know, ordered before and it came and I opened it that night and I had gotten home really late and I had been underslept and I sprayed it on. I was wearing a white t-shirt and I sprayed it on the white t-shirt and I slept that night in it. And it felt so good to sleep in my own bed after all that time. I was exhausted and I woke up smelling like this and I was like, yes, yes, this is amazing. I felt like, you know how when you buy some perfume, sometimes you feel so luxurious, like just the fact that you can buy a perfume, it doesn't matter how cheap or inexpensive it is. You just feel so like fortunate that you can even indulge in a fragrance because it's not a necessity. Now that's debatable, but it's probably not a necessity. Um, so yeah, so these notes, it's hard for me when I see the notes and there's so many and I like, you know, I think they sound really awesome, but when I smell this fragrance, it's just, it smells just so unified, not like vanilla unified, has vanilla, but then these other things like the ginger and pink pepper. I don't get pink pepper in the same way that I get it when it's in other fragrances. Green notes, you know, it doesn't smell green, but those are probably aldehydes. So aldehydes are just kind of got a tone of green and there are certain ones that are green aldehydes. Okay, and the mid is cardamom. Now I can completely see that cardamom is in here because cardamom, you know, if you've had cardamom, you might've had like a chai tea or something, cardamom is in there. It's like a warm, beautiful spice. And it's got an openness to it. It can be metallic if it's overdosed, but it's, it's a wonderful, it's kind of like, it's just a great note. You could make every single fragrance you made with cardamom to a certain extent, and it would be amazing. Gosh, oh man, there's more to it than just vanilla and cardamom and ginger that, um, that I'm smelling, but it's hard to say what they are. Then the next middle note, black currant. Well, you know, in other fragrances that I have, black currant is really tart and like sharp, a sharp, tart fruit. This isn't sharp and tart, but this is slightly fruity. So they use a small amount of black currant in here with the vanilla to give it something like sweet, give the vanilla some flavor. And it's got Turkish rose, which again, I don't smell. I don't smell any florals in here. 
And the base is the vanilla and benzoin. Certainly there's something like benzoin in here because that's a resin and it's it gives it the richness. It also is a fixative, so it helps the fragrance last longer. It helps the other notes last longer because the other notes bond to it if you mature if you mature the fragrance properly before you add alcohol to dilute it, like when you're doing the fragrance concentrate, if you add something like benzoin with the other notes, they sometimes bond with the fixative like benzoin and they last longer. Sandalwood, that's kind of a generic thing that's in a lot of things. I don't think it stands out for me here. And then cedar, yeah. And it's got that just little bit of sawdust but it doesn't stick out. It really blends in. It just kind of gives this some substance in the base that might smell a little powdery and dry. This also has patchouli, which I also don't smell. That's not sticking out. Musk, yeah, there's definitely musks in here, but they're, you know, they're lighter kind of musks. And then ambergris. So that can be animalic and it helps project the fragrance. And I think there's definitely ambergris in here, but they did such a great job blending this fragrance that basically you either like it or you, I mean, you either love this or you hate it, but there's not that much in between, unless maybe you just only like it, but maybe that's just because you're not impressed. I love it. I, I mean, I love wearing it. It's like when I smell it from the bottom, I'm like, hmm, interesting. I don't, I don't know. But then the experience of wearing this fragrance and the experience of like smelling it every once in a while, which doesn't happen with probably not even 50% of my fragrances. Do I smell emanating when I wear them? This one does. This one projects nicely and you yourself as a wearer get to experience that. And I do appreciate that. So I have lots of times considered getting a backup bottle because I've retired this since it's so low. I just don't know. I, I'm, I'm, always, I'm always torn between exploring new fragrances and getting backup bottles of the ones that are tried and true. And so far, I don't have enough finances to do both. Next, we have Hypnotic Poison by Christian Dior. The main accords are vanilla, sweet, almond, fruity, nutty, powdery, woody, coconut, and white floral, and then balsamic. This was released in 1998, and the nose and the noses are Anique Minardo and Christian Dusselar. I apologize. I, I don't know how to pronounce people's names. Christian Dusselar and Anique Monardo. The notes are coconut, plum, and apricot. And then in the mid, Brazilian rosewood, jasmine, caraway, tuberose, rose, and lily of the valley. And the base notes are vanilla, almond, sandalwood, and musk. I may have mentioned this before, but when there's a note that I'm sensitive to, it tends to stand out and distract me from the rest of the notes that are in the fragrance. And that's what happens for me with Hypnotic Poison. I like the note listing. I believe I would like a fragrance that has these notes, but the almond, it's in the base, but to me, it smells like bitter almond, the bitter part of the almond. When you do an almond extract, there's a bitter part. And there's some perfume materials that you can use that give it that. You could use the nut and you could use an oil made from the nut that's not like just an extraction of the bitter part. And sometimes I like that in fragrances when it says almond, but this one seems to have that bitter tone to the almond. So when I smell hypnotic poison, all I get is vanilla and almond. And the almond that I get is like the bitter, bitter almond. And musk, you know, I do get that, but I don't get the plum or the coconut or the apricot. And if I did, I would love it. Then there's tuberose in here, which I love, but 
I'm not appreciating the tuberose. There's lily of the valley, rose, jasmine. I just don't appreciate. And then a caraway. I'm not sure whether I love or dislike or how I feel on caraway, but I believe I do smell it because I've smelled caraway before. Yeah, I think that's all the notes. So that's how I feel about this. I have not been able to wear it in a way such that I would be able to get a project projection from it or a sillage from it because I just feel uh, really put off by that bitter almond that's in here. So yeah, I'm one of the few people that don't appreciate hypnotic poison. This is a modern bottle. So there is a chance that the uh, original vintage version might be a whole lot better. It might have like some musks or something in the base that would like help me out with the almond and distract me from that. But this one isn't. And I'm not selling it only because I need to keep my nose on it just in case it changes for me. So I think the next fragrance I have is Absolute Aphrodisiac by Inicio Parfums Privés. This fragrance was launched in 2015, and the nose behind this fragrance is Alexandra Kaczynski. The main accords are vanilla, and then shortly thereafter is leather, leather, amber, powdery, musky, animalic, smoky, and sweet. And there aren't too many notes here. The notes are vanilla, amber, castorium, leather, white musk, and white flowers. And they're all on one level. They're not distinguished between the top, middle, and base. Now this fragrance has changed for me. Now I I can see through it here, I've used this much. So I've used half of it. I like this quite a bit. There was one by Anisio that I liked more than this and that was Rehab. But I like this quite a bit. I would usually layer it because that's what usually how I use these vanilla perfumes is I layer them. And there is something animalic in here. I can tell that it's probably the castorium. Castorium doesn't smell like animal feces. It has kind of more rich aspect. It's more like leather. It's more leathery than it is uh, feces or fecal. The vanilla is beautiful. The vanilla in here is beautiful and it's prominent. It's very warm. It's warm, sensuous. It's also slightly powdery. And the white flowers, I don't know what they are. I'm assuming it's probably jasmine because that's really common or like a lily of the valley. But they just support the other notes. They don't stand out. This isn't like a floral fragrance. It just has florals in it that, you know, help to create an effect. And there's amber. Now, this is not a specifically amber fragrance in my opinion, but this is also, this is powdery. Um, I would say it's the most similar so far. Yeah, it's most similar to Royal Crown Sultan. In terms of the powdery aspect, the way that the vanilla feels, it's like, it's very vanilla forward. Both of these are vanilla forward. This one's more vanilla forward. And this is more like, all I smell is vanilla kind of thing. This is more like that. And then for this one, I mostly only smell vanilla. It took me a while to realize that there was castorium that was giving it this richness and this like almost balsamic tone. But yeah, slightly leathery, but not really leather. I mean, when, when I read that this has leather and I was like, they're, they're kidding me. They're kidding me because it doesn't smell like what you would expect from leather. I think of leather as a synthetic chemical produced to tan leather. And I love wearing leather the smell of wearing leather, I love that. But I'm totally aware that it's not just animalic from nature, it's also synthetic chemicals that are there that are emanating from the leather that are that were used to tan the leather. I don't get any of that. I, I do like it though, I like that type of synthetic um, 
I like that type of synthetic uh, note or materials in fragrances. So the next fragrance, I believe the next fragrance is Sultan Or. It's also called Or, O-R. But if you just look up Or, it's hard to find exactly which Or. So if you say Sultan Or, usually this pops up. And this is by a house named Pascal Morabito. And I don't know that much about this house. I just know that they sell pretty inexpensive fragrances, others as well, than this one. I think this is the only one I have by them. Yeah, there's other ones that are slightly on my list, but this is the only one I have. And I believe I got this for $30, maybe even, maybe even $24. Sultan Or by Pascal Morabito. The year is not listed as far as when this came out and neither is the perfumer. Fragrantica calls this an amber floral fragrance. The main accords are listed as white floral, then citrus, then sweet, then amber, then tuberose, yellow floral, then vanillic, and then animalic. Hmm. Well, when I picked this strip up after smelling these other few, I did think, oh, that's bright. Like there's citrus. It's bright in this like happy way. And I did think, I did sort of start to think about orange because, you know, I've been thinking about, uh, um, what's it called? Mandarin orange lately. I've been seeing it in fragrances that I like, and I've been noticing how it gives this, this happy brightness. It's also got this smooth smoothness that I like in a fragrance that lemon doesn't usually have. The notes for Sultan Ore are orange blossom, tangerine, bergamot, lemon, jasmine, tuberose, lang lang, ginger, amber, vanilla, cinnamon, and cedar. Hmm. You can see my reaction sometimes to these fragrances when I smell them on the test strip. And they do smell different than when you wear them, but it's a lot easier, especially while doing this video, to smell it from the test strip just because it gives something more objective to it. Um. This gives me an impression. This fragrance gives me an impression. And the tangerine in here is one, it's like, uh, it's putting its best foot forward. The tangerine allows this fragrance to put its best foot forward. And then the lemon mixed with the tangerine makes it brighter and stand out more. Then the orange blossom is just such a smooth, soft, nice element to the top notes. The, the middle notes, ginger is a little spicy, but it goes with the other stuff. And then the florals, and I think the florals really kind of make this. Yeah, I think the florals are what make this fragrance. I'm really surprised that they don't have vanilla listed closer to the top of the accords because I mean, so, so in this fragrance, the jasmine, tuberose and lang lang, especially the lang lang and the tuberose, they really, well, they are, they, this is a more floral fragrance than any of the other ones. This is way more floral. You smell the floral, it's nice, it's sweet. It's sweet and happy and rich. Tuberose and Lang Lang are slightly on the woody side. They're not delicate florals for the most part, at least in my opinion. Tuberose and Lang Lang uh, has some bitterness to them and woodiness to them. And it works really well with vanilla in this fragrance. And then the amber, yeah, the amber makes this fragrance uh, last longer. You know, it creates a base uh, that's very substantial. It's a substantial 
balance that it brings. Vanilla in the base and then cinnamon. Cinnamon is great because if you don't overdose it, you don't smell it. You just get the effect that it provides. And cinnamon provides a body, provides substance. It provides something to kind of chew on for your brain. And it uh, doesn't have to be spicy. Now, if you're sensitive to cinnamon, maybe you would think it is spicy, but it's just really nice the way that it blends together. And then there's cedar in here. And the cedar gives it a texture. It gives it a powdery, a more powdery type texture. But I don't think you'd be bothered by it if you didn't like cedar. It just, you know, it like it forms the base. So it really just gives us something to last longer. The next fragrance is Pink Sugar by Aqualina from 2004. The creators of this fragrance are Jivodon and Shyamala Mesendu. Shyamala Mesendu. And the main accords are sweet, caramel, vanilla, fruity, soft, spicy, and powdery. The notes are raspberry, orange, bergamot, fig leaf, and then in the middle is cotton candy, licorice, strawberry, red berries, lily of the valley, and the base, caramel, vanilla, musk, tonka bean, and sandalwood. This fragrance is definitely a vanilla forward fragrance. And there are a lot of notes listed here and they're interesting notes. If you buy a fragrance blind and you're looking for the notes that you might be interested in, these are all pretty great notes for me. I like the idea of there being strawberry, red berries, licorice, even though I don't like things that are super licorice forward, but I like licorice and the effect that it can have when it's blended in with everything else well. I like the fact that there's raspberry, orange, and that there's fig leaf. I will say that the fig leaf is mild. If you don't like it, you probably won't mind this. It gives it some bitterness that you know, a green bitterness that I personally think really, you know, it, it makes this fragrance more rich and not just like a cotton candy, fluffy vanilla fragrance. The Lily of the Valley is uh, well blended. It gives it a lightness and it elevates those base notes. The base notes are definitely more significant in this fragrance than like the fruity notes are. And the cotton candy. Now cotton candy is usually made with a substance called ethyl maltol, and that's a powder. And it smells just like cotton candy, like just spun sugar, not with any flavoring added. And there's a cotton candy note in the mid here. So that gives it a more powdery type of texture. It's not as powdery as some other things and it's not powdery in the iris or old fashioned powder like talcum powder. No, I'm talking about a texture of powder. And the licorice. I really don't think anybody that dislikes licorice or thinks they dislike licorice would be put off by that in here. Because licorice can give more substance, kind of like cinnamon in the way. Li licorice gives substance and uh, it's just, it just supports everything and brings it together if it's dosed properly, which it is here. And in the base, the caramel, I don't like caramel usually. I don't like things that are really caramely, but here it's all right. 
it's all right. It's kind of like if you take the cotton candy and you caramelize it by burning it a little, it's more like that. So it's not an overly sweet type of caramel. It's more of a slightly burnt type of caramel. And then yes, there's vanilla in here and white musk and the tonka bean. The tonka bean is kind of powdery and it brings something of depth to the vanilla and that's in here and it helps the fragrance last longer. It really helps the fragrance last longer, the tonka bean. And then there's sandalwood and they're using sandalwood functionally so that you kind of, it carries the rest of the fragrance on. So, you know, I think this is a good quality fragrance. It doesn't surprise me that people like it so much. I can't believe how much I used. It was like a month and a half ago that I got this. But I sometimes like to top off my other fragrances that are more like bitter. I like to top them off with something like this. So that's how I've been using it before bed. Sometimes I'll even spray my comforter with this just a little. And the last two fragrances are the Musk Oils <clears throat> by Kumba Made. The first one is the Vanilla Musk by Kumba Made. The main accords are powdery, musky, almond, vanilla, sweet, nutty, and fruity. They don't state the release year on this fragrance listing, and they don't state the perfumer. The fragrance notes are musk, which is white musk, and vanilla, almond, and powdery notes. Wow. Oh, man. Oh, this smells really good on a test strip. I'm telling you, this is really good on a test strip. On my skin, it kind of blends in too much. And I mean, I apply it on my wrist and I'm not like this was, I, it's not projecting enough for me to experience it unless I just keep putting my nose to my wrist. But when I'm on the, when I'm looking at the test strip and smelling it, this is gorgeous. It almost doesn't have words for how gorgeous it is. So it's apparently vanilla musk. It's got vanilla musk powdery notes and almond. Wow, like, you know, as far as the almond, this is not bitter almond and this is just gorgeous. Like this is just, wow. And the musks, they did such a, such a great job with these musks that I can't tell what's going on. I just know that it's just perfect. There's a brightness and a sweetness. There's a bright sweetness here. It's gotta be coming from musks because it's not, yeah, I doubt that there's aldehydes in here because that could bring brightness, but I don't think they put aldehydes in a perfume oil. And the powdery notes, well, you know, probably a musk would be bringing that. And also vanilla can be powdery, but I don't get the almond and really there's not much else to go on about what is causing this to be so beautiful, sweet, fruity, sweet and fruity, and musky and vanillic. The musk is not overwhelming. It's just, man, it's just beautiful. All right, and then the next fragrance is Vanilla Bean by Kumba Maid. The main accords are vanilla, and powdery. And all it says is that it's an amber fragrance for women and men. And, and that's what this one said too, uh, for women and men. And then the notes, literally just one, vanilla. This is vanilla. They say there's just vanilla. Now I'm sure that they use more than one single uh, material in here. I'm sure that they used a combination of maybe vanillin, maybe ethyl vanillin, maybe some ethyl maltol, but I don't smell the cotton candy part of it. And then they probably used some tonka bean 
and they might have used some vanilla CO2 extract. They might have used some vanilla absolute. See all these vanilla vanilla materials you can use to blend together however you want the vanilla to smell. It's going to give it a different texture. The vanilla absolute can give it a muskiness even, especially on the skin. So now I haven't worn this one very much, the vanilla bean, because I got it just about two weeks ago. And like the other one, it doesn't really project. I think this projects even less than the other one. But I think you might like it if you know how to use it. And it's worth having, especially for layering. You know, these oils, I use them for layering. Yeah, so my favorite of the musks or of the oil, my favorite of the oils is definitely the Vanilla Musk by Kumba Maid. So I want to just sort through these fragrances and uh, maybe rank them or something. Let's see. Okay, so the two that I like the least, the two that I like the least are Sultan by Royal Crown and Hypnotic Poison by Dior. These are my two least favorite. And I think this was least favorite of all of them. And this is my second least favorite. And then I'm gonna say this one, the uh, Initio Privé's Absolute Aphrodisiac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my third least favorite. Now I've got to decide between these two as far as which one I like better. And then I need to rank uh, Pink Sugar in here. Well, I'm going to say that if we're going from least liked to most liked, that I'll say Pink Sugar is the next least liked because I want more. Like I want more fig. I want more of those other notes that are in here. I want them to be there more. And this is more just a basic vanilla fragrance, more like a basic vanilla fragrance. It's not a basic vanilla fragrance, but I'd like there to be more more oomph <laughs> to it. Basically, I want more bitterness. I want more things that are bitter and also a little bit more fruity, maybe. Maybe give me some fruits like the raspberry and the strawberry. I want to see, I want to like know that they're in there, especially strawberry. I, I love strawberry. Okay, then the next ones. I've got to decide between these two. Oh my goodness, how can I decide between these two? I'm going to have to do it right here. First, I'll smell Ani. Wow. <laughs> Can't not smile when I smell that. Oh my God, same here. Oh gosh, oh gosh. This is hard. This is actually really difficult. And it's important to note that Ani sells for quite a bit of money. I mean, this is only 50 milliliter and it does come in a hundred, which if I do rebuy it, it will be the hundred milliliter that I will buy because the bottle looks better and because I use it up. And then this one's so inexpensive. Like this is under $40, this Sultan Ore by Pascal Morabito. And I'm having trouble deciding which one I like best. So I wear this one more. I wear this one on more occasions and for this one I have to be in the mood for it because it is like more re resinous it has a little bit more like similar stuff that that this one has in it that makes it kind of balsamic that detracts for me from the sweetness of the vanilla and this one also has so I'm gonna say this one I like next least on even though it brings a smile to my face, makes me feel a certain way, like domestic, comfortable, confident, secure. It has that, it has that for me. And Sultan Or. 
salt and ore. I don't remember whether it has uh, whether it has orange in it, but I think it does. I think it might have tangerine, but I don't know. Does does Clinique Happy have uh, orange in it? Because I swear it should. Because <laughs> if it's called Happy, it should. This is just a bright, like the citrus on here is not sharp and acidic. It's just so bright and happy. It's almost like sunshine. Maybe it's like, like a sunrise where the sun has a more orange tone to it. It's got an orange tone. Yes, it's suggested by the color of the juice it is like an orange tone, like an orange sunrise. I spray this before bed, but you know what? I should be spraying this in the morning because it's wake up. It's a little bit of a wake up fragrance. Some of these are more go to sleep type vanillas and this is a more wake up. Yes, there is tangerine in salt and ore and lemon. The jasmine, tuberose, lang lang and ginger really do it for me. That's why this is so gorgeous and they put cinnamon in and that's thoughtful. They knew what they were doing when they did that. And cedar, yes. They weren't worried about putting people off with putting a woody note in this feminine type fragrance, unisex really. But I would say sort of more feminine, you think of vanilla fragrances are often feminine leaning. The way they did the florals again is just beautiful didn't detract from the vanilla. It's just beautiful. I would say this is half floral and citrus, and then the other half is the vanilla. And the ginger is just making this brighter. It's waking you up. It's like a stimulant, the ginger in here. The orange blossom gives it kind of like a sentimentality. Orange blossom has a sort of, hmm, maybe a, maybe a slightly sad sentimentality that really uh, puts an emotion to it. Like it gives it, 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 it brings it to like, you've got a bright, happy fragrance that's vanilla. And then you have orange blossom that just kind of makes you go, aw. Hmm. Yeah. So, wow. I didn't think, but I didn't realize I would choose this, but I'm, I'm going to say this is my favorite of the, of the sprayable perfumes. And regarding the oils, I definitely like the Vanilla Musk the best. And you can tell that I already like the Vanilla Musk the best. Oh, bummer. It's like already down to here. This wasn't cheap. This is like $14 or $15, I think. Maybe even $18 for such a small amount. And the Vanilla Bean, it's beautiful and, and nice. It's rich. It's not basic. I don't know how to rank the oils against the sprayable perfumes. I feel like they're just different. The way I use them is different. The way I experience them is different. And you know, if they had these in sprayable, especially vanilla musk, if they had, if Kumba Maid had this in sprayable perfume, I would be buying it and I would pay 50 or 60 bucks for it. So it's great, but I don't think either of these are going to stand up to this one or, or Ani. And pink sugar is just, this one is a utilitarian fragrance in my mind. Okay, so I guess this video has been long enough and I'm gonna let you go. I hope this has been informative for you, maybe even entertaining and uh, feel free to comment below. I try to interact with people in the comments. Sometimes it takes me a while to formulate my thoughts and get back to you, but I do try to respond to all comments if at all possible. I will see you again soon.